final video of the week. So this is, we're going to use the integrated rate laws and we're going to figure out half-lives of reactions, which is really just another way of measuring the rate of reaction. Um, it gives us an actual time, so sometimes that makes a little bit more sense. It's a little bit less abstract than something like K, which doesn't really, we don't really have a sense of what K means yet, I don't think. But half-life makes a lot of sense. So I'm going to switch over. We'll go through half-life really quick, and then uh, that'll be it for this week. All right, so half-life of reaction half-life is the amount of time it takes for 50% of the starting material to react. Right. So half-lifes are, um, they're based on the reaction rate, of course, right? And remember that the reaction rate changes, and so the reaction rate slows down as we get less and less. But what turns out to be true is that the half-life stays about the same. So if it takes 50 seconds for the first 50% of your reaction to react, right, then you have 50% of, or you have half the concentration left, so the reaction is slowed way down. It takes 50 seconds for half of that remaining material, so a quarter of the total material to react. Right? And so it keeps taking 50 seconds for each of those half-lifes. So every, no matter where you start, 50 seconds later, if that's your half-life, you're gonna have half of that material remaining. Right? So let's go through them real quick. All we're gonna do really is say, we're gonna plug into the integrated rate laws. We're gonna say our concentration equals one half of our initial concentration, right? So if we do the zero order reaction, right? So zero order, remember that the integrated rate law for zero order is concentration of A equals negative KT plus, right? So we're gonna plug this in and then we're gonna solve for T, right? So we plug in one half A naught or A zero here for the, the concentration of A. And we get one half concentration of A0 equals negative KT plus the concentration of A0. Okay. So now we solve for T. Okay. So we're going to add KT to both sides. We're going to subtract a half of the A0 from both sides. And what we're going to get is we're going to get T on this side equals concentration of A0 over 2K. So this is our half-life for a zero-order reaction. So if you have a zero-order reaction, if you know the initial concentration and the rate, you can figure out the half-life. So half-life is sometimes uh, represented by T one-half like this. This equals the half-life. Right? So don't this one-half is not some factor that you need to take in. It's a subscript of the T to show that we're talking about the half-life. So the half-life of a zero-order reaction is given by this equation. First order. We're going to do the same thing. I'm going to spare you the, um, the algebra that we have to do, right? But we start from the, um, the rate law, negative kT plus natural log of zero, right? We start from this rate law. We plug in one half there. We do all the algebra, and what we get is that the half-life equals, well, let me see here, the negative natural log of one-half divided by k. Right. So, and the negative natural log of one-half is, is an actual value, 0 0.693, right? So that's an approximation, right? You're better off using the negative ln of, of one-half, but... Um, why did I do it this way? You know what? You can also just, if we push this negative through, this is just ln of 2. So ln of 2 divided by k, 0.693 over k. So for a half-life of a first-order reaction, right, it depends on only k, right? So whatever your rate is, you take 0.693 divided by that rate, and you get that. For a second order, it gets more complicated, of course. Let's 
second order we have 1 over a equals kt plus 1 over a0. Plug in 1 half a0 for a, solve for t, and we get the half-life for a second order reaction equals 1 over k times the initial concentration. So in a second order reaction, the half-life varies depending on how much material you add at the beginning, because of course, the second order reaction is more dependent on how much material is, is around. So there's three formulas for you, three half-life equations, right? You will use those to calculate half-life. You'll be able to figure out um, times, right? So these will come up in seconds usually, although it depends on what information you're given. It can also be in years or months or whatever unit you're given in the um, in the problem will carry through into the half-life, right? So any measure of time will work. So get familiar with those. There are some uh, questions on the worksheet that's linked on D2L that deal with half-life. So make sure that you're comfortable doing that. Again, I'll probably do an example video, although I don't have examples written up just yet. So that'll be probably a little bit before that goes up. So watch for that. But otherwise, uh, just get used to plugging those in, doing the algebra to figure everything out and do that. If you have questions, make sure that you're asking them. Um, and Good luck, and we'll see, next week we'll we'll do a little bit more on reaction rates, and then we'll move into equilibrium, which is just kind of what happens if you have reaction rates that go in opposite directions. So we'll continue to finish up reaction rates. We'll move on to the next thing next week, and that'll be it. So thanks, and uh, have a good week.